A pastor, speaker, and recording artist, Pastor Cheryl Brady has been a global influencer and committed leader for over 30 years. Because I can't live being almost free. Along with her husband, Bishop Joby Brady, she is the pastor of the Potter's House of North Dallas. She is a frequent guest on TBN, Daystar, and other networks. She is the author of the books, Don't Miss the Moment and You Have It In You. As a dynamic speaker and teacher, she has shared her faith and spread the word of God across the globe, touching hearts, minds, and souls with her unique voice. Pastor Cheryl Brady. We bless you today. We give you glory and honor. Yes, because you're worthy. Because you're so good. Because you're faithful. You're faithfully watching over us. Yeah, yeah. And I delight, I delight in you. Yes, Lord. All that I want is found in you. Bible said to give thanks unto the Lord and tonight we want to say thank you to the Lord for his many blessings and his benefits toward us I want to say thank you to our Bishop Bishop T.D. Jakes the visionary and the founder of woman thou art loose to his wife we thank God for you for what God is doing in your family to help women around the world it is a little bit strange because to do it like this because there is a sound that is associated with Woman Thou Art Loose. And when you get 10, 20, 30,000 women in an arena and they all holler, Woman Thou Art Loose, I mean chains break and chains fall. But you know what? Let me tell you something. It's not just in the volume. It's in the victory that we declare it with today. And so wherever you are, if you're by yourself or wherever you might find yourself today, I want you to know that there is victory, whether if you're alone, if you're with 10 people, if you're with five people, woman thou art loosed is here and there's victory in the atmosphere. Yes, Lord. And I am grateful today to be able to bring the word of the Lord. I don't take it for granted that, they, that Bishop would ask me uh, to speak. I always, I always am honored, always have been all of these years. And I am grateful, grateful that I have had this opportunity to declare the word to you today. There is a word, it's coming to you, it's coming to your house, it's coming to your office, to your desk, to your car, uh, wherever you are. If you're hungry, I believe that there's something for you today. I want to just ask you to take your Bibles, if you will, and if you want to write the scripture down, you can. If you don't have a Bible with you, or pull up your phone or your iPad, whatever you have. And I wanna to go to Matthew chapter seven for just a couple of verses, and then I'm gonna to go to Acts 27, uh, and then I'm going to preach or teach or whatever happens in a pandemic. Uh, <laughs> Matthew chapter seven, and beginning at the 24th verse, very familiar passage of scripture, and it says, therefore, Whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. 
And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and they beat upon that house and it fell not for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these things of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man who built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and they beat upon that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. Acts chapter 27. I kind of miss the sound of pages turning in the sanctuary. <laughs> But Acts chapter 7, and we're I'm going to just skip around briefly. I want to begin Acts verse 13, 27 and 13. And when the south wind blew, supposing that they have, uh, had obtained their purpose, loosing thence, they sailed close by Crete. But not long after there, arose against it a tempestuous wind that was called a, a Eurocladon. A, a tempestuous wind, it was a storm. It wasn't just a little breeze, but this was a storm and it was called a Eurocladon. Jump over to verse 41, and falling into a place where two seas meet, they ran the ship aground and the forepart stuck fast and remained unmovable, but the hinder part was broken by the violence of the waves. And the soldiers' counsel was to kill the prisoners lest any of them could swim out and escape. But the centurion was willing to save Paul. Oh, isn't it good that God will put people around you that he get, then give you pay, favor with those people. But the centurion was willing to save Paul. He kept them from their purpose and he commanded that they which could swim should cast themselves first into the sea and get to the land. And the rest, some on boards and some on broken pieces of the ship. And so it came to pass that they escaped all safe to the land. They all escaped safe. Now, if I was in a Sunday morning or if I was at a woman thou art loose conference that we were in an auditorium together, I would tell you, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I made it anyway. Woo. Life has been a job in 2020. I said, life has been a job in 2020, but I made it anyway. It's been dark, but I made it anyway. The clouds rolled in, but I made it anyway. I had to cry, but I made it anyway. And what I want somebody somewhere to know tonight is that God has given you the grace to make it. Somebody ought to open your mouth and let the devil hear you say, I made it anyway. I made it anyway. Spirit of God today, what an honor and what a privilege it is to stand and to declare your word in the house. I pray God that you would have your way and do whatever you want to do. Nobody does God like you do. You're amazing. You know what every person needs. So I'm asking you now, Lord Jesus, to speak, speak through me. Hide me behind your cross and speak through me, Lord. Let there be deliverance. Let it sound all over the world. Thank you for your word. It's so timely and it always finds us. We bless you for it now in Jesus name. Amen and amen. I made it anyway. I made it anyway. You know, on March the 10th this year, 2020, I woke up and I went into the bathroom and I, I looked in the mirror and the Lord immediately started talking to me about a scripture in Psalms 125 and 1. And I looked in the mirror at myself as I quoted it. And the scripture said, those that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abides forever. As the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so is the Lord round about his people. That was on a Tuesday morning. Well, on Wednesday morning, March 11th, the World Health Organization declared that there was a novel coronavirus that was 
in America and had advanced into a pandemic. I had no idea just how much those words were going to change my life. I was preparing to go on a book tour uh, the very next day and uh, I, I had no idea how fast it was all going to change. I, I knew those words were going to change my life. They changed mine, they changed yours, they changed all of us. They changed the whole world when we heard them. And all I just didn't know how, how much it was going to change us. All of a sudden, you couldn't find toilet paper anywhere. You couldn't find paper towels. You couldn't find disinfectant spray. You couldn't find uh, wipes. You couldn't even go to Bath and Body Work and find hand sanitizer. Now, seriously, you can always find hand sanitizer at a place like, ba like that. But there, were, there was nothing was like that was anywhere to be found. Everything was gone. It had been snatched up. Well, I, I remember jumping on my computer and I started a, a, an all out search using Google. And I Googled the words, what is a novel virus? I Googled, what are the rules in a pandemic? Uh, what is a pandemic anyway? What, it, what is that? And then I ended up going to the CDC and uh, I was reminded through reading there that we were hit with the Spanish flu back in 1918, but I wasn't here in 1918. So uh, I, I, I just was reading that and it was all becoming overwhelming to me. And then I Googled the word, where is my mom? Because it was in that moment that I started feeling like, I need my mom. She, she would probably know what to say or know what to do. I couldn't really look at the news because, I mean, I looked at it, but it was like they would tell you one thing and two minutes later they'd tell you something else and everything was just very conflicting. They would say, wear a mask, and then they would say, don't wear a mask, and then they would say, wear a two-layer mask, wear a three-layer mask, wear an N95. Don't wear an N95 because first responders need the N95. So everything was crazy. We, they come out with the stay-at-home order. Well, that was depending on what county that you lived in because another county right next door would call it, no, we're going to call it safer at home. So it was totally conflicting. I. I started Googling words like that I was hearing on the news and I, I Googled uh, phrases like, what does flattening the curve mean? What does social distancing look like? Is it six feet? Is it eight feet? Is it 12 feet? Uh, work from home, what, every, everybody is working from home? What is that, no sports? You mean there's no sports tonight? There's no game? What do you mean the kids are, are going to have to do online school? Uh, Zoom, what is Zoom? I don't know what Zoom is. Uh, how, how, how are we gonna do all of this? Um, online church, that's what's gonna happen Sunday. Sunday we're having online church only, online church only. Oh Lord, that's right, I'm the pastor. <laughs> I got to have something to say. People are looking at me. People are going to want answers. Lord, I don't know what's going on. I need, I need my mom. I need God. I need direction. I need Google. I need Bishop Jakes. And I typed in the words, where is Bishop Jakes? I needed a lot of stuff. I needed chocolate. I needed chips. I needed cookies. I needed chocolate chip cookies. And I needed a Diet Coke and I needed it right now. And the, uh, the, 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 the anointing of smoky Norfolk came on me and I started saying, I need it now, I need it right now. And then I started singing, be still and know that I am God. All of those things, those both extremes were just going crazy in me. I wanted to know where I need to know where my grandkids are at, where are they all at, where are my kids at, where are, where's our church at, where's the staff at, where's my normal? I just need my normal. I felt like everything was out of my control and pretty much it was and still is out of my control. Overnight, God had upended the world and everything shifted. I know we touched our neighbor 20 times and said, tell your neighbor, there's a shift, there's a shift, there's a shift, there's a shift, but I didn't know it was gonna happen that fast. Things that I thought mattered, I realized that's not what really matters. We began hearing words like pivot. Pivot was the word 
uh, in the beginning of this pandemic. We got to pivot. That everybody had to pivot, and suddenly it realized. It dawned on me, and I realized we we are in transition. We have moved out of one season into the next season. We are in in the middle of chaos. We're in the middle of that shift. We are in the middle of the storm. And then God reminded me that just a few hours earlier, he said to me, those that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be moved but abideth forever. We were strong. We were in the storm, but we were not alone. He was with us. Now, most of the time, the vehicle that takes us out of one season into another season, it is a storm. And we don't always appreciate the storm because uh, storms can be disrupting and storms can be destabilizing. But the reality is that it's the storm that makes the transition possible. And often we want the results of transition, but we don't want to go through the storm because in the middle of the storm, it's easy to begin to doubt ourselves and to begin to doubt God and to begin to doubt his word and the promises that he's made over our lives. In the middle of the storm, it, it, it's easy to doubt and just, just start giving in to how we feel. And that is why that we have to have something that 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 is that that is greater than just our feelings that is why we have to have something in God that goes beyond our feelings and actually anchors into him the solid rock to withstand and to make it through times like we are living in today we got to have a firm foundation now that firm foundation is not just going to happen. It's, it's not just going to show up and all of a sudden one day you got a firm foundation. No, if you have a firm foundation in God, you have built that foundation and it's taken you a minute, but you, you have had to put some work in because if you don't build nothing, you ain't gonna have nothing. You, you gonna have what you build. The Bible said, be not deceived, God is not mocked and whatsoever a man soweth that, shall we also reap. So if you spent years of just coming to church because you just wanted to feel something and you never invested in your foundation, this storm has probably rocked your world. And because listen, I've, I've built some foundation in God and it's rocked mine. But I want to tell you something. It's so much better. You can go through the storm so much better when you know that you know that you know that you have built your house upon the rock. Both of the men in our text tonight, they both built the same kind of house. There's no distinction between the houses that they build. There's no distinction actually between the two storms that they face. And, and perhaps maybe I should, I should say this before I go any further, that it doesn't matter who you are. Storms are inevitable. And as long as you are living, we are going to be susceptible to having storms. Doesn't matter who we know, doesn't matter how long we've known them, doesn't matter how much we're worth, doesn't matter how anointed we are, how many prayer partners we have, doesn't matter um, that we pray eight hours a day. None of that is going to keep the storms away. And the tragedy in the text that we read tonight is that one man built understanding this but the other man didn't. It's quite obvious that, that, that they both had different uh, priorities in their building. One was concerned about the foundation. The other might have just been concerned about cosmetics. And, and I think it's worth noting that anytime any building or any family or any house or any life survives a storm, we have to know that it was not because of the cosmetics. Uh, that were applied to the house. If a house or if a person survives something that should have wiped them out, it's because somewhere along the way, there was something built into the foundation. There was something built into the structure that preconditioned it to be able to withstand the storm. A storm. And I want to thank God tonight for my mother who was a praying woman that taught me long ago that whatever, whatever 
I build my life on is much more important than anything I could put in my life or decorate my life with. So whatever you're building today, whether it's a home, whether it's a marriage, whether it's a business, whether it's a family, whatever it is that you are building, we have got to know that we've got to have an understanding that what we're building is going to face some storms. It's going to face some dark nights. It's going to face some cloudy days. And in both of these cases, the Bible said that the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew. So obviously the difference was not not the storm and, and the difference was was not the materials that they put into the house but the difference was obedience because Matthew 7 and 24 says therefore whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon the rock so the difference was not the house and the difference was not the storm but the difference was what the house was built upon when the storm came and whatever we're building i say all of that to say we have got to be built up on the rock. If you don't build on the rock, you will not withstand the storm. And, and let me just be clear about this right here too, that building up on the rock is not going to even exempt you from the storm. Both men had to face the storm. Uh, but the reason that one man's house survived and the other one didn't is because one man, when he built, he knew that there would come a day that the storm would blow up against what he was building it was his house was built for the day that the winds would blow that the lightning would flash that the breaker uh, 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 breakers would dash both men both houses uh, uh, were both built on a day I'm sure where the conditions were favorable but one of those men knew that not every day is going to be favorable so he built his house in a way that should the day change the house could still be standing despite the change. Listen, you have to build whatever you're building expecting there to be trouble, expecting there to be storms, expecting adversity, expecting things to shift, expecting things to change. And how do I do that, Pastor Brady? Well, you build what can change upon something that cannot change, and that is Jesus Christ, the rock, and that is his word that will stand forever. Outwardly, everything appeared to be the same about these houses, but the storm exposed the hidden differences. The storm exposed the foundation of shortcuts and flaws. Something, let me tell you something, there's nothing like a storm to expose what you are really made of in your life. So whatever, we are building, we have to be willing to build it disciplined, be disciplined enough to build it on his word and not our feelings. Because if we build it on our feelings and not his word, it will not last. So it's got to be built on his word and not our feelings. As a matter of fact, anytime you build something that survives the winds and the storms, you will really discover that it doesn't have a whole lot at all to do with feelings. It, it, it really does it. I, I raised three daughters that are working around here and I'm proud of them. Um, but if I had not learned uh, how to go beyond what I felt, I would have never got them raised because I didn't always feel like being a mother. I didn't always feel like wiping noses. I didn't always feel like breaking up fights. I didn't always feel like doing laundry. I didn't always feel like giving up my sleep at night. But real mothers, how, how any mothers around here, real mothers have learned the art of, of just being able to keep moving. We've learned how to keep moving in spite of whatever it is that we feel. I haven't always felt like being a, a, a good mother. I haven't always felt like being a wife. I haven't always felt like being a leader. I haven't always felt like being a pastor, an entrepreneur. I haven't even always felt like being a Christian. How about that right there? But here is what I've learned. I've learned that if I stay obedient to the word of God in spite of what I feel, that God will bless my life. And when he blesses it, 
Can't nobody do anything about it. Whoever I'm preaching to tonight, let me tell you, it's going to take more than feelings to make your marriage work. It's going to take more than feelings to get your family raised. It's going to take more than feelings. It's going to take faith. Somebody holler by faith. For it was by faith. You all know that, that in Hebrews 11, that by faith Noah was warned of God of things that were not seen and he moved quickly and he built an ark he prepared an ark for the salvation of his household Noah's family survived the worst most fierce storm that the world had ever seen they 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 survived what wiped every other family out because they climbed up in a boat, in a vision, in an assignment, in a dream. They climbed up in something that he built, that he built by faith, not by feelings, not by emotions, and not, not even by senses. He, he built it by faith. Are you building anything today by faith? If, if, he, if he would have been listening to his senses, he would have never built the ark. And if he didn't ever built it, his house would have never been preserved through through all of the storms that came but because he heard God hearing is important hearing God is important he heard God but then he took it a step further and he obeyed God he dared to be different than the culture of his day he was not trying to be popular he was trying to be purposeful and because he turned down the voice of dream killers and the voice of people that would try to tell him he had lost his mind I mean can you imagine uh, what he had to go through can you imagine what the neighbors thought? Can you imagine what the homeowners association said? You can barely put your flag up on your mailbox without somebody turning you in to the homeowners association. So I can just imagine the people that went to the homeowners association saying, you know, the man next door to us, he is crazy. His, his name is Noah. He said God spoke to him. He's trying to build a boat. We're in the middle of a desert. Why would he be building a boat? We're 500 miles from any water. He says it's going to rain. I don't know. If that, what's rain? I've never seen rain. I don't know. What is he making all this stuff up? I don't, all I know is my property value is going down because he is my next door neighbor. It's a mess. Pressure. Can you imagine what he felt coming from Miss Noah? Can you imagine Babe, you have got to stop running up this Home Depot bill. I am tired. If you drag one more piece of wood, one more two by four onto our property, I, I can't take it anymore. It's a mess. And then if that's not enough, the neighbors, the wife, here come the kids. Come on, dad. Why can't you just get a real job like every other person? Why? People are finding out that you're our dad. It's embarrassing. They're laughing at us. You were on the cover of the National Enquirer. This is horrible for our social life. But Noah just kept on building what God had told him. He had heard from God. And God loves to use people who will stand firm when what they've heard cannot even be seen. When, when, when what they've heard is not visible, they stand there and they still go by what they heard, even when it looks crazy to everybody else. There is a word for that, and it is called faith. If you were here, I would tell you to touch your neighbor and say, you gotta have faith. You gotta have faith. I don't see it yet, but I still believe God. I have not felt a drop of rain, but I believe God. It makes no sense, but I believe God. I've been doing this 120 years, which is set in 43,800 days, but I still believe God. I'm exhausted, but I believe God. I feel like I'm in over my head, but I believe God. I feel alone. I have had discouraging days. I felt depleted. I felt depressed. I felt defeated, but I still believe God people thought he was a fool but by faith Noah being warned of God of things not yet seen move with fear prepared an ark 
for the saving of his household, for the saving of his household. I don't know who I'm talking to tonight, but God wants somebody to know, I'm getting ready to come after your whole house. I'm coming after your whole house. That's what the fight has been about. That's what the storm has been about. The storm ought to be a sign to you that the seasons are shifting and this is a moment of transition. You are on your way into a brand new day and you Usually the closer that you get to the storm, the more the storm begins to shake and rattle and roll you. So the fact that the storm is hitting you like it's hitting you, it ought to be encouraging to you. It ought to be a sign to you. It ought to be a heads up to you that your life is not falling apart, but it is about to come together. The fight would not be raging like it is if you were not on the verge of a breakthrough. Keep building. Keep strategizing. Keep praying. Keep focusing. And keep preparing for what matters the most. The thief has come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. He's come after your mind. He's come after your peace. He's come after your job. He's come after your family. But the devil is a liar tonight. I feel some help in here. That's why that, 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 that Moses that's why that Moses told them he said when the death angel comes through he said put the blood over the doorpost of your house I don't know who I'm talking to but I'm telling you tonight cover your house cover your house put the blood on your family it's old fashioned but the blood still works put the blood over your neighborhood put the blood over your marriage put the blood over your vision put the blood over your dream Put the blood over your ministry. Put the blood over your bank account. Put the blood over your discouragements, over your defeat, over your debt, over your passions, over your desires. Put the blood over your mind. Put the blood on everything. Because it said, when I see the blood, I will pass over. Woo! Whoever I'm talking to tonight, you have got to survive this. You have got to outlast it. You have got to outlive it. You have got to overcome it. Why? Because God is not finished with you. You have things to do, places to go, and worlds to speak to, and you ain't going by yourself. I'm taking my kids. I'm taking my husband. I'm taking mama and them. I'm taking everybody. Into a new day. Right where you are, you ought to say it out loud and let the devil hear you say, I'm headed somewhere. I come on, I dare you to say, I'm headed somewhere. The storm is raging, but I'm headed somewhere. I'm a little confused right now, but I'm headed somewhere. I'm in transition, but I'm headed somewhere. And I'm taking my whole family with me Woo. Acts chapter 27 the Bible tells us that they were carrying Paul into Italy and they were carrying him in there by the way of the sea when they started out on the ship the weather was favorable. Looked like it was going to be all right. But all of a sudden, they found themselves in the middle of a very deadly storm. The winds were beating up against the ship. It was tossing to the left and tossing to the right. They started throwing things overboard because when you get in a real storm, all of a sudden you realize I can live without that. I can live without that. And I don't have to have that. I thought I had to have that, but I don't have to have it. So they started throwing things over, but priorities get straight when you're facing the middle of a storm. For many days, they had not eaten. I think, there, I think it was close to two weeks they had not eaten anything. They had not seen the light of day. They had not seen the shore. They couldn't see anything but the storm. 
Have you ever lived, have you ever lived through a season where you couldn't see nothing but the storm? This was no ordinary storm either. The Bible named it, it was called a Eurachlodon. It was the king of storms. And it was a storm that when it happened, it would last for weeks at a time. The Eurachlodon was so powerful that it blew entire ships off of their course. So what I'm basically telling you, I'm trying to say it in a, in a fast way, but what I'm basically telling you is that those that were on board of, the, of that ship, they should have never made it. They should have never survived it. They should have never, never come through it. They should have been dead. I'm sure that there were ships all around them that had succumbed to the, to the storm. They, they, they should have never made it. So then that makes me ask the question, how, if they made it, how did they make it? How did, how did they survive? How did they, how did they outlast what took everybody else out? And here's what I discovered as, as I began to read that. I, I began to read, I believe it was in the 17th verse of, of Acts where we were reading to, uh, if you want to go home and, and, and read that later, you can. But whoever, whoever built that ship, they built it knowing that one day it would not just face an ordinary storm. They, they built it knowing that it had the potential to face a Eurachlodon, which was the king of storms. Are y'all following me tonight? They built it knowing that it, it, it could come up against a storm like that. And, and so how do you know that, Pastor Brady? Because it said in verse 17 that there were helps. I, I dare you to holler, help. Help. There were there were helps in the in the in the bottom of the ship. They were helps up, up under there, uh, uh, girding the ship. Help. What were helps? Helps were ropes, and the ropes is what would hold the ship together when it was in a severe storm. Now, under normal circumstances, the boat would have been fine, and it would not have needed helps. But in the event of a serious storm, in the event of a pandemic, in the event of a Eurachlodon, in the event of 2020, there were some ropes that were up underneath the ship and they were there and they were tied together to add, to add extra support and extra strength to the ship. Now, here's what you got to know. The helps were not visible to the eye. The helps did not affect the outward appearance. All the helps did were, were they added strength to what was already there. They fortified the ship. Well, let me tell you today that, 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 that the help, what the helps were to the ship is what the Holy Ghost is to you. It's what he is to me. He is our second line of defense in the middle of a storm. He is what the Bible calls our allos paracletus, which means he is our helper. He is the one that holds my mind together when hell is trying to pull it apart. He is the one that he is the very reason I'm still here. He is the very reason I'm still standing. If I make a right decision, it's because my allos paracletus has been in there turning the prayer wheel for me and praying for me. Oh, when there's more on me than is humanly possible for me to carry, guess what? He's praying for me. When you can't even pray for yourself, he prays for you. When you don't even have the faith to pray or the mind to pray, he ever liveth to make intercession for you. I dare you to put your name in there. He ever liveth to make intercession for Carol. He ever liveth to pray for me. I am so glad I have a God that can pray for me. 
He knows my frame. He knows how much I can take. He knows when I'm at the end of my rope. And I don't even have to tell him. He just knows. And when I need help, he prays for me. I will never forget. Maybe you've heard me tell this story, but I will never forget. Many years ago that I had been traveling and preaching everywhere and I went, I was in the city of Philadelphia and I went to the hotel after I had preached that night and checked into my room. I wasn't feeling all of that great, but I lay down in the bed. I slept till about, it was four o'clock when I woke up and I walked into the bathroom and I remember laying my head over on the sink. That was the absolute last thing I remembered until 4.20. And at 4.20, 20 20 minutes later, I was climbing onto the bed from the floor. I had climbed my way, obviously, out of the bathroom. Didn't even remember doing that. I I remember I was on the carpet and I was trying to get up to the bed and all all, what, what really brought me back to consciousness was a voice that I heard. And what's crazy is it was my voice, but it really wasn't just my voice. It, that I remember crawling and I could hear, I could hear myself saying, help me, Jesus. Help me. Somebody ought to holler help right now. Help. Help me, Jesus. He is a present help in the time of trouble. And I remember hearing myself holler help, and I felt like I was coming up from up underneath water. And, and, and here's the thing. I wasn't using enticing words of man's wisdom. It wasn't nothing like, oh, Lord, most high, I thank you for your goodness and your kindness. All I could say was help me, Jesus, I am so glad that somebody told me about the power of the name of Jesus. I am so glad that somebody told me that he lives in me to make intercession for me because in my unconscious state, something in me was calling on the name that I had always called on. When I was in my right mind, I called on him, but when I didn't even have a mind to call on him, something in me was calling crying out, help me, Jesus. Sometimes you don't have the words to say, but if you can say, help me, help my mind, help my kids, help my marriage, help my ministry, help my business, help Jesus. Woo! The Holy Spirit that in the wee hours of the morning stood up inside of me. He helped me when I couldn't help myself. The Holy Spirit that was inside of me started praying for me. The Holy Spirit that was inside of me had come to rebuke the death that was at my door that was trying to take me out. The Holy Spirit fought for me when I didn't even ask him to fight for me. When I didn't even know my life was in jeopardy, he stood up and he fought for me. And when the enemy came in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord within me raised up a standard against him. When I couldn't get a hold of God myself, the Spirit of the Lord, That's why you've got to recognize that you have a spirit man inside of you. You have somebody in you that lives to make an accession for you. The devil wanted to kill me, but the spirit, oh, I'm going to say that again. The devil wanted to kill me, and he wants to kill you too. But I came to tell you my testimony so that you would be encouraged in your testimony that when I couldn't pray for myself, The Holy Spirit in me, he rose up, he restrained the enemy, and he revived me again. Hallelujah, find the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, find the glory. Revive. I tell you to breathe in and breathe out, because the Holy Spirit is going to revive 
somebody under the sound of my voice. Revive me, Jesus. He is a God that will come to your rescue even in a pandemic. He is a God that will stand true to his promise even in a pandemic. He will strengthen you. He will help you. He will uphold you with the right hand of his righteousness. He will send you help when you don't even have help. For the Lord our God, he is the sun and a shield. He gives strength and glory. If he's been your strength in 2020, I dare you to thank him right now. He is our refuge. He is our strength. He is a very present help in the time of trouble. Somebody holler, I need your help. I need your help. Lift up your eyes to the hills from which cometh your help. He is your help. He is here. He is God. He is not just coming. He is present. He is Jehovah Shammah. That means the God that is here right now. I would have lost my mind without Shama. I would have had a nervous breakdown without Jehovah Shama. I would have made the wrong choice without him. Woo. You might, you need to know today that God is a present help yes, he is. and he is faithful. You might say, but Pastor Brady, if you read a little bit more in that text, you will discover that the ship that Paul was in, eventually it succumbed to the storm that was beating against it. And I I have to tell you, you are right. In spite of the helps, in spite of the ropes, in spite of the extra support, In spite of the added strength, that ship was ripped apart. And you know, I don't know. I don't know what the future holds. And I don't know what it holds for me, and I sure don't know what it holds for you. But I do know this, that as I look back over my life, God's hand, has always preserved me in spite of everything that was coming against me. In spite of it all, I made it anyway. Do you hear me today? I don't know what your future holds, but I do know who holds your future. And I do know that through many dangers, Soils and snares, y'all, we have already come. It was grace that brought us safe this far, and that same grace will continue to lead us on. Y'all better grab hold of that word right there. That grace. I do know that he which hath begun a good work in you will be faithful to complete it. And I do know that some people trust in horses and some people trust in chariots. But as for me and my ship and those that are in my ship, we are going to remember the name of the Lord. For the name of the Lord our God is a strong tower and the righteous can run into it. And they are saved. I do know that the ship was tore all to pieces by the pandemic, I mean by the storm. I do know that the Bible clearly said that it it was destroyed by the violence of the waves. So I I do know that the ship fell apart. But I also know that though the ship fell apart, 
The people didn't. The passengers that were on the ship, they made it anyway. I don't know who who I'm talking to, but I dare you to just stop right now and thank God. This is only, what, October? Oh, but thank Him because you made it anyway. You're not through New Year's yet, but you made it anyway. I dare you to lift up your hands and worship Him and thank God that He's kept you through everything He's kept you through. I, I made it anyway. I made it anyway. I made it this far and we've come this far how by faith it's not been easy the road has been rough and the road has been long and my life has felt like it was a job in 2020 but guess what I've made it anyway so if you see the devil tell him Cheryl Brady made it anyway I dare you to holler. I put your name in there. Cheryl Brady made it. I made it. Let me tell you, I made it anyway. I had to fight my way up off the floor that day, but I had help. I made it up anyway. My face was swollen. My eyes were black, but I made it anyway. Oh, somebody listening to me today needs to know that you are going to make it. And you have made it you say pastor brady i don't i don't know if i can agree listen if you're hearing me right now you are here by the grace of of god and you know what maybe your marriage didn't make it but you did maybe your business didn't make it but you did maybe your family didn't make it but you did Maybe your career didn't make it, but let me tell you something, you made it. Yeah, but Pastor Brady, I lost the ship, I lost the house, I lost the job, I lost my savings, I lost my insurance. But wait a minute, before you charge God foolishly, before you throw in the towel and quit, let me remind you that when you have God on your side, you can take less and do a whole lot more with it. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Paul didn't have a rudder. He didn't have a bow. He didn't have a stern. He didn't even have a frame. He didn't have any floor beneath his feet and he didn't have a ceiling over his head. But I'm gonna tell you something. When you got faith in God, you can lose the whole ship and grab a piece of it. And God will ride you into a better day. He'll ride you into a safer place. He'll show you how to grab hold of a little piece of joy, a little piece of victory, a little piece of provision, and you'll say, God, I just want to thank you. Some on boards and some on broken pieces. Lift your hands right now and just give him some glory. Yes, God. If he's ever showed you how to take not enough and turn it into more than enough, You ought to praise him right now. If he showed you how to take what the devil has meant for evil and turn it for good, praise him right now. Right now where you are, give him glory. I hear help coming. I hear help coming. I feel help coming. It's coming to your house. To your children, it's coming to your family. Woo. Receive it right now. I don't know where I would be if it wasn't for His grace. But because He gave me grace, I'm making it anyhow. Where would I be? close and I'm going to tell you this he didn't bring you this far to leave you I got just a handful of women in this room right now 
I'm not going to tell you touch your neighbor because you can't get close to him. But I think you could mouth it. I think you could look at somebody and say, this ain't the end of my story. <laughs> this ain't how my story's going to end. I tell you that right now. You better hear me, ladies. You better hear me, sir, whoever's watching me tonight. This is not how your story is going to end. You may not have a ship, but you have God. You may not have a stern, but you have God. You've got God. And as long as I got God, I got a reason to praise. So you can have my stern. I'm still going to praise the Lord. I'll praise him with my little piece of hope, with my little piece of a marriage, with my little Peace of expectation. I will praise him because he rocks me steady in the storm. If you felt like giving up, I came to tell you throw out your anchor and hold on. Woo. You may not have a clear view, but you have a good God. And when you can't see the way, he can see it. You got a reason to praise him today. Somebody said, I don't have the strength that I had. Okay. Okay. But just start using what you got to tell him he's a wonder. Hey. To tell him he's holy. To tell him you'd never make it without him. To tell him if it had not been for you on my side. If I would not have had you, Jesus, I would have lost my mind. But because I have you, I got a right mind and my right mind give you a right now praise. Cut your word. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. I want to first tell you you're way tougher than you think you are. Oh, you got more faith. Do you hear me tonight? You got more faith than you even know that you have. How do you know that, Pastor Brady? You don't know me. Let me tell you something. After everything you done been through and you still logged on for woman thou art loosed, that means you've got some kind of faith somewhere inside of you. It might be riddled, it might be little, but you've got faith. God brought you all the way, and he's gonna keep you the rest of the way. Let's pray. Father, I thank you right now. We thrust our stake in the ground, and we declare that out of 2020, out of the Eurocladons, out of the storm, out of the wind, out of all that we've been through, we declare that there will be an eruption of glory that comes out of our lives like we have never seen before. I thank you that it's going to be so strong that all hell is going to tremble. I thank you, God, that your kingdom will come and your will will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Thank you for preserving us. Thank you for marking us. Thank you for choosing us. Thank you for being with us through every sleepless night. Thank you for talking us through the storm. Thank you for anchoring us. Thank you for holding us. Thank you for talking us through. And we give you thanks for it all. In the name of Jesus. Millions didn't make it. But I'm one of the ones who did. Woo! Somebody help me thank you. Millions didn't make it. But I am one of the ones who
us grace to go through what we have been through. And some of us, we're, we're not new to storms. Lord, we've had to fight for everything. We've had a word in the basement of our spirit that when times got tough, we grabbed hold of that thing and gritted our teeth and squared our shoulders and said, come on, devil. You don't want none of this. We had to wipe our tears. But we've held on. 2020 has been a stormy year. But I declare to you, we're coming out of this. And we're coming out better than we were when we went in. Woo! You better sprinkle that in your atmosphere of your house. I'm coming out better than I was. I'm coming out better. This is not how my story is going to end. You know what I'm going to do right now? I, they didn't tell me I had to do this. and They might fire me when it's all over. But when I talked about that grace and we were singing about that grace, I thought five is the number of grace. And I want to sow a seed tonight into this ministry. You follow directions on your screen. It'll tell you what to do. But I want to sow a seed that's got a five in it. For somebody, it's a $5,000 seed. For somebody, it's a $500 seed. And listen, if you don't have it, I'm not talking to you. That's the last thing Bishop Jakes would want. We're not doing this I, just to be doing it. I've just felt in my spirit that every time I feel that and hear that and know that, there's a seed that I sow and it ships things in my life. If you felt that and you heard that and you believe that tonight, I want you to grab something with a seed and I want you to prepare to sow it. You don't even have to wait. You can do it right now. The, the, the directions are on the screen. But right now, whether you have it or whether you don't, lift up your hands because I'm going to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every woman, every man, and whoever's watching at this moment. Those that, that don't have a seed to sow, I pray, God, that you would give them a seed. That you would, the thing, that those that are struggling with it feels like the windows are closed. God, I thank you that that you're gonna open up those windows of heaven. I thank you, God, for touching every family. I thank you for opening up job opportunities. Somebody needs a job. Thank you for opening up a job. Thank you for opening up increase into our lives. For those that, that are sowing and are giving by faith, I pray, God, that you would acknowledge that faith and that you would bless them and that you would rain on their fields. Lord, let the harvest overtake them. Blow their minds with what you are going to do. Cause them to know that the darkest hour is always just before the dawn. We trust you today, God. We thank you for good seed going into good soil. Good seed into good soil. We ask you to bless it now in the name of Jesus. Click and sow if you are prepared to do that. Just believe God that he's going to turn something rich in your favor. I love you. I'm over time. I got to get out of here. But I want to tell you, you've made it this far. And the same God that brought you this far is going to take you the rest of the way. You're one of the ones who did. I love you. God bless you.